Yo, and welcome back to the channel. Today I am joined with our ball python, Marlon Bonanno, and we are tackling a hot topic, literally. There is a growing claim that ball pythons need infrared, halogen, or UVB just to stay healthy. Some people say it boosts the immune system, helps with circadian rhythm or thermal regulation, and that radiant heat panels or other heat sources just don't cut it. Why listen to my take? Well, I have a degree in zoology and I've worked on a bunch of animal studies. Plus, I'm a nerd who's been keeping reptiles since I was a kid. And I don't say any of that to toot my own horn, only to give context that I'm very familiar with digging through studies. And today, we're gonna bust some myths. All right, pause. This isn't the video I wanna make. This is a boring video that doesn't really have any conclusive answers. The whole reason I made this video is because I put up a story on Instagram and got a question about infrared lighting in ball pythons. I answered it and from there I got a slew of DMs for infrared, not for infrared, and people telling me that they had been banned or kicked out of Facebook or Reddit groups because they had suggested other sources of heating. So I did my nerdy science thing and I went down the rabbit hole and I tried to pull as many studies as I could to try to get a specific answer one way or another around UVB and infrared and different heat sources for ball pythons. And guess what? Inconclusive. There's not enough studies done on heating in ball pythons in captivity to make any conclusive decisions whether or not infrared is better or UVB or full spectrum or heat panels or underbelly heat, in my opinion. And I, I scoured and I went through them. Yes, there, there's some studies, some preliminary studies, some things that point that maybe UVB has a little bit of a benefit, but nothing conclusive. And with science, it's about building on the body of knowledge and continuously building on that until you have enough evidence that really leads you strongly in one direction. And right now, I don't think there is enough evidence to lead you down one path or another. What I will say is the most evidence we have is from the hobby. We've been keeping ball pythons for a long time, and we started off with terrible things like heat rocks and realized those were causing burns and we moved on to underbelly heat and halogen and radiant heat panels and all of these things and we've significantly improved the husbandry around ball pythons over the last couple decades for sure if you want to provide uvb or infrared go for it that's the beauty of this hobby and that's how we get further is by groups of people trying things and sharing their experiences and then adding to that body of knowledge. Because let's be honest, it's really hard to get funding for scientific research of any kind right now. But what I do think is pretty terrible is people gatekeeping in Facebook groups or Reddit groups and banning people or shaming them for using things like radiant heat panels or underbelly heat. These are not things to be shamed. There's such a small body of evidence in either direction that there's, there's no way you can say 100% that's adding anything hugely beneficial to your animal or to anyone's animal. To me, this just comes across as like a faux expertise virtue signaling, which is like no one needs. The studies that I dug through, I'll put them down below and you're more than welcome to go through them, dig through them, make your own opinions about them. And then maybe you want to experiment yourself at your house with your own animals, obviously within reason, so it's not causing any harm or stress to the animals. I think there's definitely room for that, and I think it's actually welcomed. But when people give black and whites, like it has to be done this way or that way, I think that's when we lose people, when we lose that experimentation, and I think it's bad for the hobby as a whole. When I say all these things, I'm basing it on the assumption that there's already good husbandry in place within the established guidelines, right? Good thermal gradient, good humidity, good hides, good enclosure size, proper nutrition, those things are a must. But when it comes to things like thermal gradient, I think there's multiple ways to get to a great thermal gradient right now. My ball python Isla was in a bioactive before, but since I've moved her to the reptile room, I haven't upgraded her enclosure yet to bioactive again. I, and I haven't seen any change in her activity or eating habits or anything else. But again, sample size of one, so literally means nothing. And I'll probably switch her back to bioactive soon anyway, but for me, because I like the way the enclosure looks with plants and isopods and everything growing in it, and it makes cleanup a little bit easier for me as well, which I love. If halogen lights have been working really great for you and you can maintain that thermal gradient and humidity with them, great, stick to them. If heat panels help you do that, awesome. If you wanna add UVB and infrared and everything else and have a fully bioactive enclosure, awesome, do it. I think all of these things are great options for people and I think we need to start recognizing that, that it's okay not to have one solution as long as our snakes are thriving and proper husbandry is in place. Whoa, you're still here. Thank you for listening to my rant. 
If you are still here, hit that like and subscribe button, support the channel, that's all I need from you guys, no Patreon or anything. As I mentioned, I will also put the studies down in the description. I encourage you to come through those. Don't just trust a random YouTuber, me or anyone else, when they summarize a study for you. AI is also a good tool to kind of break it down, but just be aware it can make mistakes. I use AI regularly for researching, but there's plenty of times where it miscites a study or something else, so just be aware of that. You're more than welcome to debate this all down in the comment section. I just say to keep it civilized. And remember, science isn't really about being right or wrong. It's about going down the path that is supported the most by evidence and data and, and all that good stuff. Like if a, if a study came out tomorrow that showed really great evidence for like UVB in ball pythons, I'd be really stoked. I'd hope to see one or two other labs or individuals repeat that study so that we would have enough data to really say, oh look, this feels kind of conclusive. But right now, I don't think we're there. I could have missed some studies, but I did go pretty far down the rabbit hole. This was a bit of a departure from my normal videos, so let me know what you think, and we'll have more coming soon. That's it. Peace.